All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into the simulation parameters review. Uh, so we're going to get in and we're going to look at is the scope of the, of the simulation set up correctly. So the first thing we're going to look at are we're going to look at checking for if there are any sort of errors or warnings in our model, as well as checking out some of the error files that we may have. So I'm going to open up vSIM and just kind of point out uh, we have this model that we first opened, the, the i70 model here. Again, if you have downloaded the example files, you can follow along. Uh, it should look something like this, where you have uh, our reviewers um, PowerPoint. We have some additional documentation for the project, as well as the sample file. And in the sample file, you'll have a lot of different types of files that are all, uh, you know, we have ring barrier controller files, we have output files, we have some error logs, things like that. The one you're going to want to be opening is this .inpx file. This is our vSIM input file. So if you haven't opened this yet, um, what you can do is you can just uh, open this by double clicking on it if vSIM is your default um, program, or you can just drag and drop it into an existing vSIM network and that should open it up. Now, before you go too much further in your, in your process, what you also want to do is find that Missouri DOT reviewers checklist layout file. Because when we first open up this file, it's gonna have just the default overview look. And so what we can do is we can take this reviewers checklist that, that we have prepared and you can also just drag and drop that onto uh, the vSIM project. And what this will do is this will give you this drop down menu up in the corner um, that you can uh, have that have the different checklist elements. So we're going to be going through uh, 36 different review check uh, steps over the course of the um, of, of the sample. Um, just real quick, somebody's asking about where they can get the example files. Let me real quick find those and put the link back in the chat for you. Just give me one second. Okay, so I put a, a link into the chat. If you are still needing the example files, you should be able to find them here. The only thing that you will not have is the animation recording because that was a very large file. So I chose not to upload that. Um, it was about 10 gigabytes. So whereas everything else is, is fairly, fairly concise. Okay, so uh, looking at vSIM just quickly, Pointing out the different elements again, we're working with vSIM 2022, Service Pack 5. Here are all of our network object layers, uh, messages and warnings. Um, we did have some messages that had to do with um, missing 2D, 3D objects, but those are not simulation breaking. They were, they were yellow warnings, so we are good to go there. Uh, here's our network editor. Quickly to navigate your network editor, you can pan around by clicking your scroll wheel on your mouse and dragging on the scroll wheel um, on your mouse. You can zoom in and you can zoom out. Uh, it has a live aerial maps uh, linked with, with the Bing map service in the background. There's a little globe up in the corner if you wanna turn that off though, and that can better see your uh, network that you're gonna be monitoring. So one of the first things that we'll see when we open up the file is that there are these boxes with a bunch of text. And what these boxes are representing is these are background images that failed to load in. And that's because um, I was not provided with the background images, which is fine. This is a fairly common thing that will happen. 
there'll be some custom background image or something like that that might be an aerial or a site plan or something like that that isn't provided now from your perspective as a reviewer you'll probably want those files so if you open this up and you see these errors um, you'll go back and you'll look through your model files that were provided um, and you'll be looking for these specific um, in this case we'll need jpeg number two jpeg number three jpeg number four and so on and so forth um, if those are not provided to you that might be something that you want to ask for because there might be some differences between the live aerial maps maybe the live aerial maps haven't been updated as recently and so there's more accurate maps that that they used as as reference images or something like that so that'll be something that you can definitely look at um okay so uh what we're going to do is we're going to get into looking at the the messages window in this case we had no uh messages down at the bottom that we that we were worried about the other place you're going to want to look is actually on the example on the uh, working directory itself so if i pull up that working directory you can see we have some error files these are errors that are generated when the simulation is running and then we also have a uh, ring barrier controller log text files these are errors that are generated by the signal controller typically there's not a lot in these log texts um, but for example let's say we look at one of these error files from the simulations so in this case, you can see that we have six errors uh, numbered one through six, and that's probably because they were generated for each of the simulations that were run. So you can always open these with, with something like Notepad or something like that. And what it will do is it will log every time there's something weird happening in the simulation. In this case, we're seeing a lot of vehicles, simulation second vehicle X arrived at the end of the link without having found its next route or something like that right and so there are these types of warnings um, where if this is happening a lot um, there might be a an issue with the simulation there might be an issue with um, with vehicles missing their routes uh, there's another one here that says the simulate at simulation second uh, vehicle after waiting for a lane change was removed from the link now this particular error um, is very very common uh, what it is insinuating is that there's vehicles that are trying to make a lane change uh, but they get stuck in the simulation and so what vsim does is it just removes that vehicle hoping it's kind of a one-off thing but if you have a whole bunch of these exact same errors in the same location then that could be a calibration an indicator that your calibration is is going wrong or something like that so if you have a one-off like this one for example you just see the one vehicle missed its route then you can ignore that but if we look down we can see that there are a bunch of these after 60 seconds of vehicle was deleted after 60 seconds of vehicle was deleted so that's already an indicator that there might be um, some sort of calibration issue with the lane change parameters or something like that we're going to get into all that detail on how to suss that out a little bit later um, but for now, that's kind of what you're looking for in these error files. Are, are there common errors that are coming up multiple times in a simulation? And if so, that could be uh, an indicator of something, some larger problem with the calibration or something like that. Generally, uh, per the documentation though, per the, per the online documentation, there should be some sort of description about the calibration process and about error reporting. So you should also have some companion documents that might have answers to why these errors are the way they are and why it was submitted with those errors. So once we've, dis once we've gone through and we've uh, uh, observed all the errors within the network and um, now we can go through and determine, okay, what were the model parameters that the network was run with? So in this case, we're gonna start with some of the simulation parameters. These are kind of the time periods that we're gonna be looking at and, and, and running with that. So the first place we're gonna look is uh, how long was our simulation run for and how many number of runs did uh, did they do? Um, in terms of the simulation period, 
uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at uh, typically an AM or a PM peak period. Unlike something like a, uh, you know, an intersection capacity analysis, right, where you're just doing a peak hour. Typically in simulation, you're going to be broadening the scope a bit because you're going to be looking at not only the peak hour, but some shoulder periods and things like that. Um, and and typically you're going to be doing your whole congested peak. So, you know, in the morning that might be three to four hours in the afternoon, it'll probably be like four, four and a half hours, something like that. Um, and then the number of runs is important because in vSIM, we, uh, every simulation we run uh, has various randomness to it. So vehicles are slightly randomized in terms of what speeds they choose and when they arrive in the network. And so to eliminate the bias of your results based on a particular randomness of one simulation, it's recommended that we run multiple simulations. And so uh, there's guidance in the manual uh, about how to do that, uh, the, MoDOT, the MoDOT analysis tool uh, Visa protocol, there's going to be um, a section that'll describe how many runs you need to do and, and things like that. Um, so once we know that, what we're going to do, typically it's somewhere between 10 and 20 runs is a good, is a good chunk. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into vSIM and we're going to look at the simulation parameters and see what type of um, simulation parameters did we set up then what we're going to do is we're going to look at to uh, uh what we call the seeding period so in vsim when we run a simulation it starts completely empty so uh it's it's a cold start is the is the term that we use in the simulation world where the simulation doesn't have cars already on the roadway. So what we need to do is we need, when we hit play, the cars start to filter in from the boundaries of the network and filter through. If we were to start collecting data right away, that would leave a lot of time where you're not collecting any data and that would throw off all of your statistics of various turning movements and things like that. So what we have is a seeding period that allows vehicles to make their way through the network. And there's a section 5.3.2.3.1 in the VSIM protocol that will tell you how long that seating period should be and, and the proper way to set that up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna look at the evaluation configuration, because this will tell us, uh, if we see this column, this 2A column right here, the from time, that will tell us when does when do we start collecting data? In this case, we're seeing that it's indicating about 1800 seconds. And this will tell us that we're waiting about half an hour before we start collecting data. So if we go back to our simulation period, we see our simulation periods 12,600 seconds. 12,600 seconds is, just one second, um, that is what is it three and a half hours so if we have a three and a half hour long simulation and the first half an hour of that is warm up that means that we have three hours of actual uh simulated time that we're going to be working with uh that we're going to be collecting data on three hours worth of simulation and the first half an hour is just a period when we're waiting for cars to kind of trickle through the network and the larger the network is or the more complex the network is the longer your warm-up period will need to be so why don't we give it a try we're going to jump into our vsim model and we're going to take a look at our simulation parameters and again we're looking at error files we're looking at the the simulation period and we're going to be looking at that warm-up period so when we open our vsim file we could just do this um in this one graphic layout but we also have other graphic layouts that will that will kind of help us through this so up in the corner you should see this little drop down right here that says network editor layout selection these are basically graphic presets that we have that we've set up and this will act as a checklist some of these won't display anything um, anything a novel or anything like that but they will act as kind of just a a nice indicator, a nice reminder on what you're supposed to be doing next. So step one, check messages. So we can click on that. It'll kind of gray out the screen. It'll only show the links and, and the background images. 
And this is just an indicator to remind you, why don't we check out our messages window and see if there are any messages. So if I look down at the bottom, we don't see any immediate messages jumping out at us. So then step two, we're going to check our error files. So we're going to go into our error files and we're going to look at um, our working directory and see if we have any errors or anything like that in the network. In this case, we've already looked at one of the error files, but you can see that, yes, we have um, some errors that are coming up quite frequently. Uh, in particular, some vehicle is being deleted after 60 seconds. So we see that a vehicle was removed from a link 89, right? And we see this link 89 coming up a lot. We see this link 493 coming up a lot, uh, link 52. Um, so that might be an indicator where we'll need to go back and double check those links to make sure that that is not a calibration issue or something like that. Next, after we've gone through and checked those error files, we can check the RBC error files. And again, if we scroll down, we can see this RBC log text. I can open that with a notepad as well. And we can see if any errors have come up. Um, in this case, these are uh, model errors that came up a, a while ago that had to do with um, an error not being found, but uh, these are fairly old errors that we don't need to worry about now. So as long as the, the model is running with those, you should be good. And we're gonna check that in a second where you can go up to the simulation section. Oh, I don't know why that's, that's funky. It's coming up on my other screen. If you click the simulation, there's going to be a check network option that you can click. And then down in the lower corner, it'll say this has been checked. And so there are no warnings or errors. So that's another uh, way that you can check those. Again, for some reason that popped up on my other screen. I'm not sure why it's why my menus are doing that. That's that's really odd. Let me make this smaller real quick. So I guess simulation. Yeah, it's still popping up on my other screen. That's really weird uh, that my menu is popping up on my other screen. Um, we'll come back to that, though. Um, just give me one second. Okay, I'm, I'm going to real quick switch my screens back and forth so that way you guys can actually see what's going on. So let me share my other screen real quick. Okay. Sorry about that. Just one second. Share my Okay, so now if I jump back into vSIM, here we go. All right, so in the sim, this is this is what I wanted to show was if we get into the simulation menu down at the very bottom, there's this check network option. If you click that, uh, it will check and double make sure that there are no messages or or RBC errors. And you can see in the lower right hand corner, a little message comes up: the procedure check network has been completed. There are no errors or warnings. So that's another way that you can go quickly check to make sure that there are no other errors or issues with the simulation or anything like that. So now that we have checked our error messages, the next thing we want to check is our simulation period. So we're going to come up to our simulation menu and in there we can find our simulation parameters. 
In our simulation parameters window, we can see that the period right now is uh, 12,600 seconds, so that's three and a half hours. We can see that it is set to 10 model runs. So that is as we as we expected. And then we can go to the evaluation menu and go to evaluation configuration. And in the evaluation configuration, we can see that we are starting to collect data a half an hour into the simulation. So we have a good warm-up period. And again, to indicate why we need a warm-up period, if we look at our current model that we have, if I were to just measure the distance from one end of the model to the other, for example, this is a 10 mile corridor. So even under free flow conditions, it would take 10 minutes for vehicles to trickle from one end to the other. If we started collecting data right at the beginning of the simulation, then vehicles at this end, uh, uh, these exit ramps would be undersaturated because they're, the vehicles from the other end wouldn't have gotten to them yet. So that's kind of something that we want to make sure that we are accounting for.